So that's perfect. We can move to uh, to the room five because this was room C, uh, room six. I thank you very much, Daniel and Luis, for this presentation. Uh, and now we're gonna have uh, our great Brazilian girls, uh, Marcella, Gabi, Camila. The floor is yours. Who is going to be sharing? Me, or please, Marcella. Yeah. Wonderful. Let's see. You have the power, Marcella. So, hello, everyone. Um, we are the River Waste Plastic Pollution, Paranoa Lake now. <laughs> Our um, title has changed. Um, Mark, can you please move a uh, fast one? So our project started on Epic. So during February this year, we went to Hamburg and participated on this great event and had the opportunity of um, working with an international collaboration. So this was our group. Um, our river waste plastic recovery um, project was um, a group with Brazilians, Dutch and Norwegian students and our main objective was to study uh, what, what what's actually happening around the world um, when it comes to plastic recovery from lakes and rivers. So we focused on um, recycling processes, um, how to extract um, all this waste from the water, so extraction methods, and all this um, research was focused on all, all these findings. Mark, can you please move fast? So um, when our EPIC project was over, we could find a lot of um, information with the project. And we saw a great opportunity in Brasilia since we have the problem, um, as well as all the countries around the world. And we didn't have any actions to combat it. So during our EPIC project, we started developing this idea of implementing all the research we've done in Brasilia. And our main difficulty was the leak of data. So we could not just start um, with all the data we had. So we need to stop and think in phases. So we needed a step one, so we developed um, this new study about Brasilia and we have three main um, phases to develop this initial thoughts and to comprehend a little bit more about the problem. Um, so we focused on mapping the plastic disposal flow in Brasilia. So we started mapping all the transport that this plastic um, suffered. So between companies or even um, all the paths that the plastic could, um, could run. And we also had this institutional point of view. So we started mapping the institutional, institutional and legislation um, involving the management of plastic in all federal district. So uh, this way we could understand all the roles um, that each institution had and all the responsibilities that they needed to, to develop. And also the third variable that we start looking for was the definition of all the, the variables that had influence on the disposable of this plastic material into the lake. 
So um, variables as climate, um, as wind, um, about also the structure and construction um, around the lake, what would actually um, help the, the plastic waste going into the lake. So we were mapping all this. So as you can see, we had these three visions. So the disposal flow, the institutional and legislation, and also the variables that contribute to the problem. So this way we could understand better the problem um, to later on think about um, how we could collect data. So this order of presentations were not um, the, the order that was on Trello, but our project um, was the pilot project that now um, it originated several other um, projects from the same problem, but with different um, objectives. So this is very nice. And also our project was one of the first projects um, about this subject in Brazil and especially in Brasilia because we don't have any other initiative that is similar to this or either that um, wants to, to resolve the problem. And also we are very concerned about model replication um, as we all discussed earlier in this event, um, Brazil have this system, this waste management system that is not federal. So we have different regions and cities and municipes um, having their own um, system and models. So our project um, also have this um, this preoccupation of maintaining a model of replication. So it could easily be replicated in other cities in Brazil um, to help all, all those to also develop a project for each region. Um, also, our project, one of our project outcomes is a methodology um, for initiating this database that we intend to build. Um, so, as I said, we don't have a lot of data about the problem in Brasilia. So, the first thing we did was actually understand better the problem and then um, think how could we manage, man, manage um, this big problem that is the leak of data. And um, having a partnership with some of the institutions that work with the problem in Brasilia, we developed a methodology um, that is a methodology of collecting data um, into the, the cleaning of the drain system in Brasilia. So our first data will not be um, the data from the waste in the lake, but the waste that was going to um, end up in the lake. So this methodology is, is already developed um, and is one of the first methodologies in Brasilia and also in Brazil of collecting data of plastic. Um, and another outcome was all this incentive to preservation that our project had. Ma, can you please pass? So next steps. Um, yesterday we talked a little bit about it and our project has the intent of continuing the, the, the work. So our next steps is the actually implementation of the methodology created um, to later on have another step that will be the analysis of the new data and also the development of the database um, 
we also have the to consolidate more partnerships with institutional with institutions that work with the problematic so we already have um a, a very good communication with the infrastructure secretary um here in brasilia so they are going to help us to implement uh, all the cleanup that i said in the drain system and we already have a partnership with Adaza that is an institution that is responsible for the quality of the water in the lake and other other roles they, they have. But um, it's a little bit difficult this part because there is no institution that has um, that is responsible directly for this problem, so the the plastic pollution into the lake. So as we don't have one institution that does it, um, we need to be in contact with several institutions that each of them um, are responsible for a small role in this problem. So we need to, to consolidate more partnership and also to, to incentive um, each institution to move on with the project because they are um, the, the people that actually are working on it. And also in the implementation of action plans to combat the problem, um, once we have more partnerships and more data, we can have a better action plan to combat the problem. Um, as you can see, we added um, the direct contact with the other river waste groups that work with similar issues because as we were the origin of the problem and as we are working to have this macro vision of um, it all, we need to maintain the contact with all these several um, projects, for example, the extrusion ma machine that was just presented um, for us to, to continuing um, having the same goal that is actually res having a resolution for the problem. So, Mark, can you please pass? So, um, it's very clear that we have further activities um, for having all these next steps. So one thing that we actually learned in APIC is that there are two ways um, of looking into this problem. So we need to see ways to prevent the plastic from reaching the lake. And we need to solve the problem of the plastic that is already in the lake. So we need to maintain um, these two views and search for a better understanding between both of them. So what to do with the plastic that is already in the lake. So this involves um, other groups like the group that is developing the machine um, to extract all the, the plastic from the lake and also um, all the variables that we, we researched during our, um, during our project about what actually contributes um, to the plastic going to the lake. So this is something that needs deeper research because we need to start understanding how to contain the problem. Um, also, a deep, deeper research of mismanaged plastic sources so we need to understand um, what causes the mismanaged plastic, so which are the sources um, for us to have a better um, resolution later of how to, to um, stop this from happening. Um, also, a construction of a visual and didactic database to acquire data obtained. Um, as I said, we intend to build this database 
and it's very important that it is a visual and didactic database for having all um, understanding what is in there and also um, to to serve as um, a form of preventing all this from happening because you are educating people that see the database. Um, make a flow chart of the value chain of the water plastic. So it was something that we ta we started doing on Epic. Sandra was also um, someone that started that. Um, is a way of um, represent all the study we are doing. So the flow chart is very important. And also for the other groups that are um, working with river waste, this is a very key um, a key tool for us to, to develop because it's a map. So it's very visual. We can actually see all the steps and the value chain um, so this is something that we always need to work because it is something that needs constantly improvement. And last but not least, contribute with other river waste groups. So as I already said, there are many now and we have the same goal. So we need to start working together and have um, constantly updating each other and also follow up. So these are uh, um, our further activities that are needed. Um, so thank you all. Um, I would like to open now for comments. Um, we have Sandra here, Camila, and also Marcela. So if you want to compliment something, um, you will be more than welcome, and also doubts and comments. Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, yeah, the, the first of all, the representation of the girls, it, it's exactly that, like, they were the original project, and maybe, uh, actually, definitely, in the, in the next semester, we're going to have at least six uh, fronts or battlefronts for this project so they are they are doing an amazing job they they they've done an amazing job and they are still doing an amazing job uh, uh being the, this original project that uh, like pro provided the problem and 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 also the methodology that they developed mm -hmm. yeah it's something that's uh like it's new because we have nothing like this uh, in in our city and also in brazil it's ra rare to find some works on this way too but so for, this is my first comment uh and if somebody else has anything to say uh especially uh, we, we uh, the professors and also the other river waste projects yep Let's see, Daniel Victor. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, well, I think it was a, a pretty good in interaction between the, the teams to to, agree to to solve the, the problem of the, the river waste. Um, yeah, because it's, it, it acts uh, in a different uh, a step of the chain, but also uh, it is the same problem that you are trying to fight in our lake here, right? Yes, exactly. That's really good. Perfect. So, yeah, and, any professors? Let me. Yes, uh, yes. Just professor. a comment. Yeah. I remember uh, those that were in Germany. You remember that uh, when we started this project, talking with Natasha. In a table outside the the, 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 the the building outside the the room out there so it's really amazing how this thing progressed so uh, from a, a real personal talk with professor natasha and then we have now six or seven projects just going on and i think this is a and going to including mechanical and designing and production 
and maybe some other areas that we are going to be really interested in people in this thing. So congratulations to you. It was really a very, very, very nice work. Thank you very oh oh wait we have somebody uh here uh professor simoni yes gabi uh, i want to understand better did you create a methodology and your your proposal is to apply a created uh, methodology it, it, it is yes professor um we developed with the, the infrastructure secretary, um, this methodology for cleaning up the drain system. In Brasilia, we call it Boca de Lobo. Um, so this way, with this cleaning up, we could start gathering some data about what is actually going into the lake. So this way, we intend to gather some information for our databases and also, um, to have more information means to have more power. So <laughs> we intend to have a better action plan uh, once we have more information about the problem because now we are actually in the dark. We don't have nothing, basically. Um, it's very difficult to gather something in, in Brasilia because we don't collect data. So our first um thought was to actually develop something that it is this methodology that has this main goal of collecting data so it's basically it i don't know if i answered you yes yes oh, thank you. perfect perfect uh, any other questions just a second. Professor, one, one thing that is important, I think, to emphasize is that um, this is also important um, to apply continuous um, improvement on our project. So it's also something that I didn't write in the goals, but um, it is very important and I will update the, the document because I think this part of quality management is very important also. Um, because once we have more data, we need to apply a plan, do, check, act all over again and start um, doing this as a cycle, not only as a strict line. Yes, it's a very important. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, Rafael Patron? Yeah, I just have a question about uh, how are you planning to do the data collection itself? Because uh, now I see you want to have a look on the lake, but in the, oh, sorry, uh, in the rivers that go to the lake and in the in the drain, yeah, in the Boca de Lobo. So how are you, which methods do you plan to use to get this data? Okay, um, the infrastructure secretary that in Portuguese will be a Secretaria de Obras. Um, they are very interested on developing some, um, they call it contain lakes. So in Portuguese, são lagoas de contenção, um, that are these small lakes that are artificially built um, into the, the channels that later on goes to the, the Paranoa Lake. And this artificial um, lakes, they function as something to stop some residues, also not only waste, but also sediment from going directly to, to the lake. Um, so they are already having all these, these actions by their own. And they also do once a while um, this cleaning up in the drain system, but they don't catalog nothing they found in there. So we started all our methodology building um, a system to better understand and collect data from something that already happens. So this is why we thought about it. Okay, thank you. An excellent presentation. 
Uh, I could Thank also you. add a little bit on what you said there about data collection. Uh, for instance, you could start looking into applications where uh, you collaborate between the IoT project, what they are doing. Uh, it was already written that it could be integrated into the, the river project. But for instance, if you have the volume distribution around the city, and if you have enough data points to that, maybe you can start uh, moving the volume into weight. And then you can also start looking into, okay, what, what do you pick up from the, from the lake, from the extraction machines? How much does that weigh? And you can get like a percentage flow of the waste, how much is going into the lake a little bit. So it's, it's a lot of possibilities. It's just about being creative and looking at what data points do you have and how can you put them together. Yes, there is no doubt that this communication and this contribution between these two products um, would actually help us to develop a better database because, as they said, they would have a sensor um, on their machine. So um, we would have these different um, types of collection of the data. So the type where we had um, the application of the methodology and also um, the data that was found by the machine into the lake. So we could, with no doubt, also compare those um, and analyze this, this comparison and uh, everything. So yes, I think all those river waste um, groups, they, they have a very, um, a very, I think, strong connection between them between us because uh, we are treating the same problem. So no doubt we cannot develop this database um, just um, from our methodology. So it is a very interesting point that we need to have this communication very strong and this iteration um, happening at all times. And if anyone yeah. has other questions, you can ask us later because we don't want to use like all the time of the event too. Great, Marcello, uh, PC, yeah, okay, later. Perfect. So uh, thank you very much to the girls. Uh, yeah, special thanks uh, to the girls that are here, uh, Gabi, Camila, and Marcella, who have like, uh, like took the leadership amazingly and conducted that uh, in a very, very like, yeah, wonderful way. I, I, don't, I don't have any other ways to describe it because you led the, the, the whole thing and now things are growing uh, thanks to you. So thank you very much. And also special thanks to Sondre, who is also here supporting us uh, with his great, uh, always great performances and uh, very, very sympathetic way. So thank you.